What's up, people? It's your boy Rant and Rave Infection, and I'm here finally to count down the top 36 best movies of the decade from 2000 to 2009. We count down the greatest films ever made from this decade. Let's begin. Now, before we get to the list, some of you are probably wondering, well, why top 36? Why 36? Why such a strange number? I mean, why, why not pick a more well-rounded number, such as a top 30 or a top 40? Well, I chose 36 because it's kind of a, a tribute to a list that GamePro made. And it was a top 36 best PS2 games of all time, best PlayStation 2 games of all time. And I thought that it was a such a uh, accurate, well-informed, uh, diverse list. And I, I agreed with a lot of the choices on there. And it's probably the best top PS2 lists uh, you can find as far as like a mainstream publisher such as a GamePro. So yeah, it's kind of a nod towards them. Anyway, let's get straight to the list right now. Coming in at number 36, Wally from 2008. Yeah, well, this is the Disney animated film, you know, family film. And it's basically about this little robot, and he's stuck on a planet, you know, isolated and lonely. And what happened is, th this this planet is basically, he, he's the only robot in there, you know, he's the only existing thing there. Uh, all the humans have left, basically, because the planet is so polluted, and it's filled with so much garbage and trash, and then this little robot is kind of stuck there, and he's kind of... Uh, it, it, he's left to his own devices, and in his program, he has to uh, fix up this planet. He has to clean up the garbage. You know, he's kind of almost like a janitor kind of robot. And so he's, I, I mean, I think the the film delivers a uh, this this feeling, this atmosphere of being lonely and isolation. I thought they really did a great job of making you feel like, wow, this 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 little robot is you know all by himself, and he's got no friends, and he's all you know you know he's he's lonely, and he doesn't have any uh, companions, and you know you, you really kind of feel sorry for this little robot, and. Eventually, you, you know, I don't want to give too much away, but the robot finds a certain companion and the story kind of picks up from there. But I, I thought it was a kind of a sad movie, very emotional. You know, I almost felt crying at certain times of the movie because, you know, once again, that deserted, you know, lost uh, robot, uh, you know, feeling kind of all alone, basically. You know, you're all alone. You're a little robot and you you have nowhere to go except uh, fix up this this destroyed, totally polluted planet that uh, humans have caused throughout their years of uh, uh, carelessness and like, you know, tr uh, treating uh, the earth and treating the planet with so much carelessness. So, uh, it's a great movie, um, very emotional. It's a great movie, man. This is one of Disney's best films and they've really done, uh, they've exceeded themselves and this is one of the best films they've ever released. So I give props to Disney. I give credit where credit is due and they did a great job with this, uh, with this particular film. You know, imagine if this movie, imagine if uh, R2-D2 had his own movie. This is what that film would be like, you know what I mean? This little robot. Because uh, the thing with Wally is he doesn't talk or anything, you know? He doesn't have any speeches except, you, you know, a few like beeps and whatnot you know he doesn't uh, speak in english or anything like that so you know it is what it is it's a great movie uh, i urge everybody to check it out and uh if you are a fan of this movie i would uh, recommend also to watch castaway from 2001 starring tom hanks so moving on we go to number 35 Apocalypto from 2006. Yep, this is Apocalypto, directed by the now infamous Mel Gibson. It's a great, uh, epic movie. You know, it's kind of like this Mayan theme to it. You know, this this Mayan civilization, basically at the tail end of their uh, their era. And what happened in this movie is that basically you have these these ancient Mayan tribes from like, you know, the the, the mid. 1400s if I'm not mistaken and they're fighting amongst each other and there's like tribal warfare and and they're killing each other and they're sacrificing each other and it's like this this you know I mean you know it's one of those 
tribal wars, you know, you have these indigenous cultures, you know, they 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 thrive and they they live amongst each other but then they also fight amongst each other they war amongst each other and particularly the the mayan culture you know with the whole mayan you know ancient pyramids and uh sacrifices you know and it, it, i loved how they showed the 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 thriving nature of the the culture you know I, I loved how they had this this prosperous city this prosperous city this this culture that's just filled with uh you, you know a huge population i mean it was just beautiful the way it was recreated you know i love the jungle scenes i love the the opening hunting scene you know they were hunting the boar and it was just well done you know as, as far as like cinematography and as far as using the sets and like the beautiful recreation of the actual um uh the the, the culture the, the the place the area the location uh the, the film is it's kind of a long movie, but you know it's an epic film. There's a storyline where uh, the main characters, the main tribes, they end up getting caught by an opposing kind of uh, you know just other tribe, and then I mean they have to escape. You know they basically have to escape or risk losing their lives because they're they're gonna get sacrificed. But great movie as far as you know. The direction is on point. I mean Mel Gibson is a pretty pretty decent director. You know he's a pretty good director. He's uh, he's got a vision, and I, I can appreciate that. It's just, it's just kind of sad. It's just disappointing that because of his incident, you know, uh, he ended up making a lot of like racist remarks towards Jews in particular, and so he ended up getting a lot of heat, uh, got a lot of shit, and so he ended up th this film, this uh, Apocalypto, ended up getting a lot of flack, and it got affected, you know, as far as being distributed and being recognized. Unfortunately, it kind of got. Um, overlooked, it kind of got uh, uh, his infamous reputation exceeded this film. But it, I think, I mean, just because it's a it's a Mayan epic, man. It's one of those like you you know, it's the Mayan culture is hardly represented anyway. You know, when it comes to mainstream films, but so it's it's a great thing to see this. It's a great uh, recreation of this particular uh, beautiful ancient culture. Even though, yeah, it is kind of a little bit a, a little bit romanticized, a little bit glorified in some aspects some people might even criticize it and say well it's just exploitation i think it's beautiful you know in some ways it's the it's the uh dances with wolves of this generation you know so it's a, it's a good film it's a genuinely watchable uh you, you gotta see this it's a must watch film so moving on number 34 the kite runner from 2007 this is a great film, man. This is a great, uh, awesome movie as far as representing another culture. Basically, a story about uh, Afghanistan and particularly these two Afghani boys growing up in uh, in the 80s and you, you know seeing how basically normal how how normal their lives were back in the in the 80s and the 70s and uh, unfortunately. Uh, when the Russians took over Afghanistan and the, the, a lot of the people that were living there they were forced to move out because there was warfare and so it, it, you know it showed the, the trials and tribulations the, the hor horrific things that uh, these people had to go through um, their struggles and you know their norm normal lives you know before all the BS and yeah, moving to America in the West and, you know, uh, facing certain problems as far as... Uh, I just like how this movie showed the Afghanistan people in, in, in their... Uh, in a fair way, in a fair manner, in a, in a normal manner, you know, because, you, you know, there's a lot of stereotypes out there. There's a lot of negative stereotypes about uh, Middle Eastern people out there. Um, it's beautiful to see, like, this Muslim culture and... Uh, you know, r represented in a normal way. I mean, showing the you know their living and and, and eating and with you know they got families and they're they're playing with each other. You know, the kids and the, they're flying kites and having uh, uh, kite flying competitions and it's it it really humanizes the people. You know, it humanizes the culture and it's beautiful to see that. It's beautiful to see a great movie like this. Um, the direction is uh, on point. Uh, the the movie is uh, there's enough pacing in this movie. There's enough different uh, kind of side storylines and maybe adventures that are happening. Not so much adventures, but just like 
these little caper things that happen in the movie that are almost unbelievable. There's there's a particular scene in the movie where they take on the freaking Taliban, you know, and they eh, they're they're caught in the middle of this. Uh, Taliban thing and it was like oh my gosh you know what's gonna happen are they gonna you know are they gonna get killed and you I mean, you gotta watch this movie I mean it's just a great portrayal of uh, a culture that's been so unfairly uh, judged you know in, in, in the media great movie The Kite Runner uh, from 07 so number 33